moment is here. The time is now. A trip to Pittsburgh in the 2021 Frozen Four is right in front of their eyes. Bemidji State in UMass. This is what they play for. This is what they live for. This is going to be good. Bemidji and UMass, we will have our first Frozen Four participant in about two hours. John Butchergrass, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen joins us for a second. Barry, you can't have postseason college tournaments without a Cinderella story. We got one right here, the Bemidji State Beavers. And do we ever? Yesterday, they played a game against Wisconsin, who most people thought was one of the best teams in the tournament, and they played great. They played a perfect hockey game. Their special teams were better than their goaltender was better than Wisconsin. Defensive game was better. They were awesome in that game. And they ended up coming back and winning. So Bemidji sort of already had an upset, but it wasn't the case. Butchie, we will see you play all night for UMass. There they are. They have helped UMass to an 8-0-3 record in their last 11 games. Again, they haven't lost since January the 18th. The goaltender has been outstanding. Philip Lindbergh. Look at those save percentage numbers, Barry. 9.56. 956 is unbelievable. That, that's just a crazy number with the shooters that he's facing. He was awesome in the first game, moving very, very well. He was aggressive. He was strong. Controlled the rebound pretty uh, much the whole game. Right there's an excellent movement. Uh, just, just on fire at the right time, man. He played great. Absolutely. A big reason why UMass has a great PK unit and a big reason why Bemidji State has a great PK unit. The goaltender. That is Zach Driscoll. Drizzy, as you see there on his helmet. These are the two best penalty killing units in America. Bemidji, 91.4%. UMass, 91%. Head coach for Bemidji State, Tom Saratori there, his second regional final appearance. Remember, he took this team back. The year Colby's BU Terriers won it all. They were a, a frozen four entry. And Colby, I remember you talking to us the other night at dinner. You didn't want to face that team. No, we did not want to see Bemidji. When we drew Ohio State, we were very happy. They had Matt Reed, Matt Dalton, Brad Hunt. This Bemidji team has been good for a long time, and they're getting an opportunity, guys, to show it once again in the national tournament. Once again, it's pullovers versus suits, Barry. The UMass coaches, hey, they've done it all year. Let's go, suits. Yeah, Come well, on, let's see, go. You see the pullovers there behind the UMass bench. Suit and ties behind the Bemidji State Beaver bench. No fans here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Family and friends rooting on their teams. Again, the winner goes to the Frozen Four up, in up, Pittsburgh. Up, it's either going to be UMass or Bemidji State. There's Jake Godet, got two goals yesterday. The top line for UMass, Oliver Chow made a nice pass to Godet on one of those goals. Chow missed a breakaway from center in, too, don't forget. He'd like to do that over. Gusevich with a wraparound attempt. So early pressure from UMass with a good cycle game from this veteran line. Again, these are guys 24, 25 years old who have played a lot of college hockey. The Beavers break in. Good play there by Mark Del Geizo with one hand on the stick. Here comes Bobby Trevino, one of the dangerous offensive players for UMass, number eight in white. Let's keep an eye on the UMass D. They're already pinching down the wall. There goes Zach Jones down into the corner. They will look to keep Hucks alive all night, the UMass D. There's Kessel, as Cody mentioned, behind the goal line. Trevino can't find time and space. Great start, as you mentioned. Uh, Bemidji sort of uh, caught between everything. They're not fast right now. Puck loose in front of the net. Trevino had a chance. There's Kessel all over the rink. Chris shot just goes wide. Jones keeps it in on the left side. Tries to dance between the Beaver defense. Tapped out of midair. That could be a high stick, but it's played by the Beavers, so play continues. Trevino, great pace by these two good skating teams. Trevino, Lapina. Throws it behind the net as UMass is changing with possession. They changed four guys. Sullivan, there's Bollinger, the defenseman, pinching as well. The freshman 
looking for his first college goal today. This would be a great way to get it. The Sillinger line is out there. Mike Sillinger's sons, Owen and Lucas. Owen, number 12, Lucas, number 20. Alex Iruo, the leading scorer, plays with them. He's number 14. And Owen will take every major drive. His uh, coach said that there's not even a second thought. He's out the door every time. No stoppages yet here. Continuous play for over two minutes. There's Ty Farmer. Throws it up. The Beavers looking for some offensive zone possession. They get a shot on Lindbergh there. He's able to see and feel the puck. Third line out there for the Beavers. Ross Armour centers with Alex Adams and Tyler Kirkup. Little pinch in now for Bemidji. They're going to attack. And to the front of the net and the paint. And Lindbergh covers up. We mentioned Jake Cadet. Not a great regular season scoring, but he's scoring at just the right time. Had two goals yesterday, Barry, right in front of the net. He was awesome yesterday. That line was awesome yesterday. They were quick. They were fast. They had scoring chances. Awesome job there. No way your shot's going to get through. Go for the pass. Cadet's in front of the net. Not a big man, but he's in front of that net supplying muscle and screens all the time. So that line was excellent. Yeah, you can never go wrong by getting to the front of the net by stopping and leaning on your stick. And he was the beneficiary of a couple of good plays, but he's putting himself in that spot. Face off to the right of Lindbergh. One by the Beavers. Wrist shot doesn't get there. Block shot. Hard hit as well. That was Jerry Hardy. This is the fourth line as the puck comes into the stands. Souvenir number one. This is that fourth line that had a couple of good shifts for Greg Carville. There's Anthony Del Gaizo. Remember, he got his first goal of the year with an empty netter. This has been a good shift uh, for Bemidji. They needed something positive and they got it. That's a good hit right there. Uh, I love getting hit or, or hitting somebody early in the game to get you fired up, get you going. So Bemidji maybe has weathered the storm right there. John got over those two minutes when it was in their zone the whole time. So we'll see if they can sort of take some territory back at the other end of the ring. We'll see the top line right back out there for UMass to try to provide that same pressure they did to begin the game. They win the faceoff. Del Geizo throws in the corner. But that behind the net. There's Masevich, member of Bill's Mafia. Chow will turn away, go to the point. Felix, wrist shot, blocked. Puck is between the hash marks, but the Beavers are able to collect it. Third line out there for Bemidji State against the top line of UMass. Nice play by Del Geizo. High stick? No, like a high I don't stick. think so. I, I think that was below the shoulders, and the refs waved that off. The player think. thought it was offside, or a high stick, I think. They were slow to react, the referees, so Del Geizo, just to make sure, didn't play it. And the Bemidji bench actually threw Del Geizo off, Butchie. He heard the bench yelling and just assumed, but... Open man in front. It's Waite. Turning. Shot it wide. Didn't have a great shooting position to finish off that play by Lapina. Nice play by Kessel to keep it in. Whistles it wide on purpose to get the puck deep. Jones and Kessel out there. The two D-men Colby talked about before the game. Mobile and smart. Plenty of offense. The freshman Lapina. Outstanding player. Number 10. Sisters, Trevino and Wayne. Watch out for Trevino. Oh, he shot it high and wide. He had the upper right-hand corner pick. Gets it back again, in front. Wait, throws it back to the point. Jones, you mass around, then it comes to Trevino. In front, Lapino went right between his skates. I think that puck was rolling on Trevino, that's why he missed the top corner. It was there, he saw it. He knew where he wanted to put it. It did look like it just went on edge before he shot it. Back up the minute, oh, the linesman picks him. Lester walks in, shot it wide. Reed Lester took advantage of a pick from the linesman. That was a great pick. Yeah, broke in free. Back up Derek Martin, Carter Jones, and Sam Selensky. This is a young fourth line for Bemidji State. The other three have lots of experience, not as much with this group. We're going to have icing. Let's look at Trevino. Let's look at what happened. He beat the player going wide. Gets a puck, gets his head up, jumps to the middle. The defensive played that very poorly. Cool. Give him the middle, or give him the wall. Don't give him the middle. And you saw the corner. It was there. You could see it on your TV screen. And he was going for it. That wasn't even close. I think uh, right. it must have gone on edge, because that thing yeah, was it did. five it, feet wide. She was rolling. Yeah. What a start for her. Uh, yeah. UMass. Wow. They look outstanding. But again, you got to cash in here. Yes, you do. Mika, fourth line out there. Kept in by Mark Del Geizo. They'll slap it towards the net. Felix can't keep it in the right point. 
Mark Del Geizo is another defenseman for this UMass team. He's a high draft choice in the NHL. He likes to get involved offensively, and he's another guy that'll be jumping in the play. Yeah, he's got 12 points in 24 games. Right now, it's the forwards that are causing problems for Bemidji. It's not the defense. They can't, they can't get the puck in the zone. And they had a shot. You had two shots. Well, shots are four to two. That's not bad, but puck control is certainly all with UMass. Careful. There's almost a turnover. That's what Bemidji State lives for. They got a couple against Wisconsin and cashed them in. It was almost one there. So, Geizo. UMass is going to slap that down. That's going to be icing on the Minutemen, so the faceoff will come back. It's coming. The UMass end. It's coming, UMass. Or, uh, or, uh, Bemidji's getting her going a little bit. And the UMass coaches were not happy after their game. They won by a pretty comfortable margin, but they were not happy with the details. There's Greg Carvel. He's a details guy, the UMass coach. He wants them to do the right things, not take shortcuts and be better defensively. And it looks like his message so far got through to his team because they looked very fast today. I never gave my pl players hell when they won a game. I did when they lost a game because they were controlled. They the next time after I gave him hell, they ended up losing 5 nothing. So I, that was the best lesson I ever had as a coach. Don't complain about winning, ever. UMass took six minors yesterday. They took five in three games in the Hockey East Tournament. So they got away with it yesterday. Greg Carvel knows they can't take six minors again yesterday, uh, today, as they did yesterday. The Bemidji State now tries to create some offensive zone time. A little pinching now by... Uh, Bemidji also getting back in the game, getting more confident. That third line again, Ross Armour, we saw him score yesterday. He's in the middle with Tyler Kirkup and Alex Adams. Now they'll settle back as they change, and the top line for Mumas is back out there. Here comes Chow. Chow over the line. Good throw behind there. Watch out, get for Gusevich. He's looking to hit people. Rosen had a good game yesterday for Bemidji State. You see him, tries to headman pass. That's not icy, waved off. Oh, bad play there by Bollinger. It's a turnover. It's last year, it's a lot of give in Webster. Bank Arena. No change. No change. You know, I'm seeing a lot of similarities to start this game. Both teams are telling their defensemen to pinch down the walls, and both teams are having a hard time breaking out against it. So if you're UMass and you've got Bemidji State pinching down the walls, you've got to get the puck into center ice. That goes for Bemidji, too. Both of these teams are sealing the wall well. Here's Owen Sillinger. His dad was a face-off extraordinaire in the NHL. <laughs> yes, he was. You know, a lot of different teams. Clearly genetic. Owens had a, had a good day yesterday. We'll see how he does here. These face-offs are all key. Brother Lucas, number 20, was good, too. The Bemidji bench is calling for a penalty because there was two infractions there, and they are animated and unhappy. Don't get the call. Shot wide. It's front. Bouncing around. He's very lively end boards here in Bridgeport. Keep an eye on that. Back home to Miniman. Trevino, wrist shot. Easy pass save for Driscoll. Farmer goes to pinch, then he'll retreat. And UMass back in a good position defensively. Kobe, you said it about the deep pinch, and I love the way they're playing, man. Yeah, and that one, Barry. Farmer didn't pinch because he took a peek over yep. his shoulder, and he yep. wasn't sure he had the support, and that was a smart no pinch. Here comes Lapina now, waiting for the line change. The defenseman line change. Block shot in front. Nice play there by Kyle Lost. Del Geizo in deep. The defenseman very deep. UMass changing. Will this be icing? Yes. The Bemidji State cannot change, so the linesman and officials go right over. Take a couple plays behind the net. Uh, very, very lucky that the puck got out. Uh, it could have been blocked behind the net, and then everybody's on the sides, the front of the net was wide, wide open with some players, but Bemidji got a couple lucky breaks with the puck going by that guy who was trying to block it. There's the line, Alex Irulo there, number 14, the leading scorer. Owen and younger brother Lucas Sillinger on this line. Face off one. Tyler Jubinville is out there for Bemidji State. They carry seven defensemen. UMass carries an extra forward. Lebster around, tries to chip it out. Can't. Rosen, good job keeping it in. 
That's going to be played with a high stick or a hand pass. It looks like if the hand pass is the call, face off just outside the UMass end. If you're, if you're a hockey fan and you're watching what's happening on the ice, watch when uh, Bemidji has the puck and they have face offs at either end. You got uh, Owen Miller or Owen Sillinger will be taking all those. Quick timeout here in Bridgeport. No score. We played exactly eight minutes. The winner to the Frozen Four. All right, so good news for Quinnipiac fans. Earlier today, it was St. Cloud State. Remember, back-to-back -back years, overall number one seed, they lose. This year, there are two, they move on. Here's our side of the bracket, so you know if you don't want to look forward, if you're a UMass fan, if you win this game, and you know you're going to play in Pittsburgh, game number one will either be North Dakota or Minnesota Duluth. But Odin Tufto, the senior at Quinnipiac, makes it one nothing against Minnesota State. By the way, that... North Dakota, Minnesota, Duluth contest, and that's a titanic battle right there. That follows us. Butchie, Duluth going for three in a row? They are going for three in a wow. row. Maybe a little asterisk because last year was canceled, but still certainly three championships in a row and a three possibilities. Only has been happened once before. That's way back when when Michigan got off to a head start in college hockey. Kept in by Gusevich. Bit wide. Aaron Miller gets the top line out there. Here's Brendan Harris for Bemidji State. Oh, good back check there by Kessel as Samozo is about to tee that up at the top of the circle. Yeah, UMass has been by far the better club so far, but it's still, shots are still four or five. That's just to get a little bit too dicey. Good, good. You're playing well, but you're not getting any shots to the net. Del Gaizo, long tape to tape to oh. Trevino. Eight up half the. 200 foot by 85 foot sheet of ice here. Standard NHL size rink here in Bridgeport. So the game has settled a bit for Bemidji after that really good start by UMass. A couple of really good scoring chances. Lapina, nifty center iceman. Dalgaizo looking for a shooting lane, couldn't find it. Trevino behind the back pass into the slot area, but no one's there to connect. Back come the Beavers. Sillinger, Sillinger, and Irulo are out there, but back comes Lapina and Trevino. We got trailers, two trailers for Lapina, but he can't connect with Del Gaizo, who skates right by the drop pass. Oh, great back checking, great back checking, great movement. Lapina, really good composure for that freshman. Takes a hard hit from Sillinger, and they battle and push each other there as he changes. This game's getting physical quick. There's a lot happening over by the benches. There's a lot of chatting going on. There's a lot of hits being finished, maybe a second or two late, and the energy's picking up on both sides. Well, for some reason, the, the Midgey didn't have a lot of energy early in this period. They're starting to get going a little bit, so they weathered the storm. Bollinger retreats. Farmer falls down, but he's got plenty of support from this defensively-minded team, UMass. Very responsible, very well structured, very detail-oriented, as Colby mentioned, with head coach Greg Carvel. Back to the point. Now they're set up. Jones and Kessel are out there. Little okie doke from Jones. Fakes the shot, goes over to the St. Louis Blue draft pick. Kessel shot it just wide. Jones pinching the New York Ranger draft pick. They keep every puck alive. Here goes Kessel down into the corner. Your forward, Butchie, you love that. They are keeping you in the offensive zone your entire shift. It's a way better way to play hockey. Every forward loves that. Here's Kessel again. Over to Jones. Fakes. Wrist shot to the net. Never got there. Skate with it. They gotta start skating with it. They just can't go back and get it like you said, Colby, and just throw it up the wall. Make a pass. Make a direct pass. Nine oh two to go in the opening period. Some physical play here, right around the red line. Watch out for Lucas Sillinger. Couple of freshmen going head to head, literally. Mike Sillinger was a number eleven overall draft pick by the Red Wings. He played seventeen seasons with twelve teams. Excellent faceoff man. Totally outkicked his coverage. Mary and wife Carla. There's no doubt about that. Raised three really good hockey players. We see Lucas and Owen today. That's Cole over there on the left. He's an excellent player as well. So the Sillinger family, certain. Uh, 
from Regina, Saskatchewan. Barry, you're part of the world. Yeah, Mike played for me in the American League. We won the Calder uh, Cup together. He was an awesome player. He was an awesome pro. Uh, he's an awesome father, and they have an awesome family. A lot of awesomes in there, but really, sometimes you got to use a word like that consistently to uh, get your point across. Great, great job. Top line out there for Bemidji State. Off the TV timeout. Aaron Miller will go try to get it. He's out there with Brendan Harris and Ethan Somoza. He had a good game yesterday. They didn't need that big shot of his going towards the net a little bit more. You see the size there of Goddett just ate up his fellow center iceman, Brendan Harris. But off the wall, here they go. Rosen's got a chance. Delayed penalty coming up. Bemidji State is going to go on the power play. The whistle will blow. And here we go. Power play number one of this regional final game. And that'll put the test. The excellent PK unit of the Minutemen. The top two PK units in America are here today. Okay. Well, there was there was a power a couple power plays yesterday for Bemidji, but their power play didn't look very good. They obviously have a much better penalty kill than they do a power play, but uh, they got to find a way to create some offensive power play. Is that way? We'll see if they can ramp it up a little bit from what the, they were doing yesterday. They had the lead yesterday all all game. That isn't the case right now. And 28 for Bemidji. Elias Rosen. He's a defenseman. He'll run it and he'll roam around a lot on this power play. Big shot too, right? Colby's got a rocket of a shot. Kessel clears. Keith Kachuk in the St. Louis Blues scouting department keeping an eye on their draft pick. Matthew Kessel, number four. As Bemidji State up the ice they come. They were 0 for 3 on the power play yesterday in their win against Wisconsin. Remember, we told you UMass had six minor penalties yesterday, but they killed all of them off. Uh, they can't get the entries in. That's twice now they've, they've uh, blown entries. It costs you 30 seconds. You go back and get it and do it all over again. You just got to get the puck in deep, skate it, or, or uh, throw it in and go get it. Here comes Miller. Towards Lindbergh, just wide. Very active bounces off the end board. The goalies will have to be ready, and the defenders as well. Driscoll comes out to center. Great pressure by UMass. They know, they see the puck along the yellow, the small part of the boards, and as a penalty killer, your coaches will teach you. A player turns his back, or you see the puck on the yellow, you can attack. And UMass has had a couple of easy clears. I think they're a little nervous. Another penalty coming up. It's got to be five on three for 50 seconds for the Beavers. We've got a long time until we've had a shot on goal. Both teams, it's actually three, three shots on goal. Our jumbo shot is up. Off. So we'll see now if Greg Cargo and his team can kill this five on three for 50 seconds. Yeah, Check this it. is an easy one, Barry. Yeah, you're going to get that every that, time. That, that, it looks like it's a weak call, but that's 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 what you do now. That's tripping. Stick was in the skates. Guy fell. That's uh, that's a penalty. That's a good call. So not a good senior moment yeah. for Jake Godet right there. So five on three for the Beavers. A big moment. They scored the first goal yesterday, and they really want to do it again today. Miller the points with Rosen. They got four forwards and the defenseman. Miller. They move it around. UMass packed in. Miller can shoot it. Block. What a block by Zach Jones. Number 24 out there with Kessel. And Bobby Trevino. Beavers. Tape to tape. One timer just wide. Owen Sillinger got a lot of that clapper, but it just went wide. Oliver Child standing up. He'll come out of the box in 10 seconds. Rosen gains the line, drops it back, but Lapina, the freshman, with a nice backhanded play. So that will end the five yeah. on three. There were some nice passes out there, but the puck never got to the net. You can't score if the puck doesn't get to the net. You can keep it going around the perimeter as much as you want. Yeah, UMass doing a nice job playing a triangle in front of Lindbergh. One guy on the puck, not letting two on ones happen. Here's another play at the blue line. And right now, UMass, they are doing a great job absorbing this rush and breaking plays up. UMass took a chance changing all four skaters. Almost got caught. Other back in it. 40 seconds left. Just that one scoring chance. The cylinder one timer that just went inches wide. So the Beavers again. Getting ready to get a shot. Having a hard time generating shots. But so is UMass at this point. Yeah, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. And UMass has been by far the better club, so. Only official shot on goal in that power play time was a dump in. The five on four, the five on three, then the five on four again. Here's a chance. Here comes Gusevich. Will he win the race? He's got Chow in the middle. Here comes Chow. Back to Gusevich. Score!
Marcin Gisevich. Give and go with his line mate, Oliver Chow. And the Minutemen eat first of 1 0. Yeah, Gisevich in the neutral zone, just a fantastic play. It was a two on two. The Bemidji player couldn't keep up with the other two. And there was a two on one created, just great puck movement. There's the race, there's the race. You see 11, 11 can't catch up, 11's late, 11's late. And there's the pace to Gisevich. Great play. That one player for uh, Bemidji just couldn't keep up, and that enabled the outnumbered chance and the, the great pass across on the two on one. Chow is not really a shooter. Maybe if Tyler Vold knew more about the Minutemen, he may have, would have attacked. But remember, Gisevich yesterday, he had that four on two moment. And that goal. That's everybody chasing the puck. He stayed right in front of the net, just like you were mentioned. Those are the two goals of Jake Gadet. That top line of Chow, Gisevich, and Gadet have been absolutely monsters these two days, Barry. Very much so. That, that was a great play, man. You had, you had a bad power play yourself. Everybody was tired on the ice. You just got into a foot race. Again, it's an NCAA hockey tournament is about experience. It's about full-grown men, and we keep harping on it, but we'll say one more time. Chow, Gadet, Gisevich, they're men in their mid-20s. They've been there. They're smart. They're experienced. Chow has played 133 games. Gadet, 122 games. Gisevich, 128 college games. And they are shining here at Bridgeport over the weekend. Now Bemidji has to come from behind. Obviously, no one likes to do Ooh. that against a good team like UMass. Anthony Del Geisel got that stick up pretty high along the boards. Uh, he delivers another hit, so he's running hot right now. Bemidji, Bam! Bemidji can't complain about not having enough power plays. <laughs> yeah, they had their they had their chances. Big chance, five yeah. on three. So the uh, the blood's flowing a little bit here. Anthony Del Gaizo, 27, doing some chirping as he goes to the bench. But boy, Chow and Gisevich. But guys, this goal actually starts back in the D zone. Bollinger, the defenseman for UMass, he makes a smart heads up play by clearing the puck up the middle. That's what leads to the two on one and to Gisevich's goal. But so many times a defenseman just blindly puts it around the board. Smart heads up play by the UMass defender that led to that goal. There he is. So the Minutemen strike first in Bridgeport. One more look. Saucer pass from Chow and Gisevich cuts it away. Good start for Rand Pecknold and the Bobcats. So pumped to be covering the Frozen Four, our 16th consecutive year back in the great American city of Pittsburgh. Thursday doubleheader, ESPN2, the final on ESPN, April the 10th. For more information, NCAA.com. Love that music. NHL back on ESPN this fall. The building is pumped when that news dropped a couple of weeks ago. Our last year of coverage, 2004. Seems like only yesterday, Butch. Tampa Bay beat Calgary in seven. Matthew Kessel and the UMass Minutemen trying to return to Pittsburgh and play in the house that Crosby built. You know what a big deal it is for these college players to play in an arena like Pittsburgh, knowing that Crosby and Malkin and those great Penguin players. In a low blocker save by Lindbergh. Alex Adams had an excellent chance to tie this game. Good. Lindbergh with those gaudy save percentage numbers continues to climb. Trevino, dangerous number eight. Turns, goes to Lapina. Lapina's got two players coming off the bench and hit both of them. And the Beavers get it. Rosen gets it out. Lapina, the big line for UMass out. The number one line. The grumpy old men line. We have an icing. The faceoff will come back in. The Bemidji State end, and there's the freshman. Look at that flowing salad right there with a the hard hit. Kid. He's a good looking kid, and I like the fact that it was a good hard hit. Didn't take penalty. That's so important right now. Make everybody pay a price. Gets a little pat in the back from the older guys. It's great to have a mixture of older guys and younger guys, boy. And obviously, UMass has that. So the game went about six minutes without any shots on goal before that Gusevich tally. So the game had kind of 
settle into a stalemate situation. And that first goal was going to be so big, so certainly UMass feels good now as Felix turns it in. It looked like Bemidji's plan was working to a T, though. Turnover. Flag it up. Backhander right into the gut of Driscoll. Laganoff's another guy, 17, with lots of experience. Game number 127 in his college career. As Owen Sillinger and the Beavers trying to figure out this UMass yep. team, good skating, good disciplined squad. Got to win the draw, regroup, win the draw, regroup. Good draw. Slowly. Bad Doug, a former Minnesota Golden Gopher. Son Will. Plays now for the Bemidji State Beavers. Take to tape pass, a good one from Del Geisel. Here comes Blagunov, still out there. Zach Jones looking for it. Blagunov got room. Shot blocked. Second shot, fan. Puck still alive. Goes in the corner. Remember, UMass still looking for their first power play. They should get the next call if it's close. Smolik, head up. Backs it around to Miller. Jones decides not to pinch. Stick Miller loses his twig. The puck comes back in the UMass zone. Kessel and Jones out there together. Fourth line out there for UMass. Mika, Hardy, Del Geizo. Taken by Jones. He's got some momentum. Here he comes. Flips it to the corner to himself. Goes and gets it. Jerry Harding, his winger, supports him at the point. And he'll be there to get that high launching puck. That's the key, though, Butchie. When you're a defenseman, the confidence that you're able to play with, knowing a forward is always backing you up like Harding did there. That gives Zach Jones latitude to pretty much jump in whenever he wants. And that's one of the reasons UMass is so successful sealing off the walls. It's because they have such good support and their structure is so good. Anthony Del Geizo out there. Trevino's waiting for him to get to the bench because his line's out there. Two-thirds of it. Wrist shot from the point by Lapina, and now Trevino can come on the ice for Del Geizo. And but UMass is taking over. You see the what battles on the walls we talked about, battles in the corner we talked about. Everything is UMass right now, and and uh, Bemidji's got to get her back somehow. It's usually a big hit, good hit in the wall, good scoring chance, which they haven't had in a long period of time. But don't get any worse. You got two minutes left, two uh, one goal down. Don't make sure it doesn't get any worse than that. Better, yeah, but no worse. We've had a high-scoring tournament so far this year. 7.25 goals a game in the NCAA hockey tournament. Last time out, we had four and a half a game. This one, though, is very tight checking. Very few shots on goal. It's one nothing UMass here. Here come the Beavers. They got space. Wrist shot. High and wide. That went off the bar. That, that puck hit off the bar. I had a great sight line on that, and I'm pretty sure that thing hit iron. I think you're right, by the way. Kirk Cup reacted. He kind of looked to the rafters as the play continued. His shoulders slumped in mid-play because he saw that graze the iron. A great chance to tie the game. Here comes Trevino. Number eight dangling at his feet. Still has it. Still dangling. Backhand goes wide. Del Geizo takes a look. He can't pinch. Plays it safe late in the first period. Forsberg loves and he'll leave it because now the Beavers are changing. 75 seconds left in the opening frame. See how Del Gaijo gets his feet moving? He takes four hard strides before he goes to move the puck, and that forces Bemidji to back up. It doesn't allow them to be too pressured along the walls, and they can take a page right out of the UMass book on that. They're struggling with that, guys. Played with a high stick. Faceoff will come to the right of Driscoll. Here's that bar shot that Colby had a great look at. Yeah, this thing's gonna graze right off the glove and then right off the elbow where the crossbar and the post meet. Right there. Good call. You better, was, you better be get some hunting, a uh, couple guns and stuff and go hunting. Those are good eyes, man. <laughs> yeah, tip of the glove <laughs> tip and graze the, the post. Didn't wow. make a noise. That's why we, no one really, we didn't get a safe call from the ref. Colby's the only one who saw it. And actually, Kirkup saw it too, because like I said, his shoulder, SCORE! Carson Gusevich has his second of the game off the Kessel slap shot. And now UMass is in excellent shape, up 2-0. You can't lose draws in your end. We talk about it all the time. I'm a stickler for that. I talk about it too much, probably. And that's exactly what happened to UMass. We talked about get out of this period. It's a bouncing wow. back. Just a great shot. He made solid contact. 
goaltender had the glove up and everything, but she was moving. She was wobbling. You know what makes that play so hard to defend? The fact that Kessel shoots the puck right away. The puck's rolling out, and it's a one-timer. So the guy who's in charge of covering Kessel at the point doesn't have a chance to take two steps to the right and get in the middle. Anytime that low-to-high puck comes out and you one-time it, you're going to create action at the net. And UMass makes a great play, a great tip, and that's a huge goal with 45 seconds left in the first period. That's a game changer, man, giving up that goal at that time. Yeah, here's a good look at it. He never dusts the puck off, and he does not give Bemidji a chance to get set in their coverage. I and think he touched that. Oh, he did. He did. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's Gusevich with the goal. He's Absolutely. Stuck in the game. It's a great tip. Went straight down. Excellent. Great draw, great draw. Excellent camera work by our ESPN cameras. Multiple looks at that beautiful deflection from Gusevich. And boy, Kessel for a, a fluttering rolling puck. He got a lot on that shot. Now Geizo falls down. It's getting rough in that corner. That's where the bad ice is. Here come the Minutemen. They score in the last minute of the opening period to take a two-goal lead. Driscoll, nice blocker save, comes all the way out to Miller as the Minutemen change. That's the name Minutemen, last minute. Mm -hmm. I like it, John. Living up to their name. Trademark, yeah. trademark. <laughs> Call the lawyers. <laughs> There it is, the horn has sounded here in Bridgeport. There he is, Carson Gusevich, a proud member of Bill's Mafia from Orchard Park, New York. Great career at St. Lawrence. Here he is in his 128th game, gets his 76 to 77 point, Barry, two goals. Well, there's the wraparound. You see the uh, UMass winning all the battles for loose pucks. Bemidji's coming in. We get that race that we talked about tonight. I just love the fact that he went back. He had no shot if he didn't go back to Gusevich. That's exactly what happened. Look at them hunger, man. They're winning all the battles. Great play in the wall. There's the one-timer. Great job. So Carson Gusevich with the beautiful deflection off the Kessel shot. His second goal of the game has given UMass a 2-0 lead. Car Carson Gisevich will join us now. Carson, have, do you have a hat trick yet in your college career? Uh, no, I do not have a hat trick. All that right. was uh, one of my goals coming in, but not yet. Uh, Carson, I thought you guys were flying. I thought that's the best period you guys played in the tournament right now against a very good hockey club. We saw that yesterday, man. You, you guys had energy out there. Yeah, I thought uh, yesterday was by far our best period of the, of the weekend so far. Um, we started coming on late yesterday and we carried that into today, so it's good to see you. You guys haven't lost this year, Carson, when you score first. Why is that the case? Explain your defensive structure to us, how your coaches want you to play. Uh, I think we just have a lot of experience. Um, everyone knows how to hold on to leads. It's hard to hold on leads, and we're a team that's willing to work hard, so that's, that's what we're going to try to do here. All right, man, great first period. Good luck in the second. Thanks, guys. Carson Kisavich, he promised to jump through a table like the Bills Mafia if they win it all. So we're going to get a table in Pittsburgh in case they get there, just in case. He had it going on. Carson Gusevich, the senior, now has 16 goals in 27 games this year. He got the first one. He added another. And UMass leads 2-0 after 20 minutes. The winner of this game punches their ticket for the Frozen Four in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. John Butchergoss, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen is also here. And Barry, I think the Minutemen have stunned the Beavers. Uh, they got only had five shots on goal in the first period. I think the Beavers are drowning, man. Uh, UMass has been fantastic. Uh, I, I thought you know, it was going to be a good hockey game. I thought it would be a close hockey game. But UMass has been by far the fastest team, the hungriest team. Uh, the goals are scored. They got a shorthanded goal. Uh, they're just playing great, great hockey right now. And Bemidji somehow has to get back in his game, John. <laughs> Look at that, since the new year, they've outscored their opponents in the first period, 23 to seven. That's the highest goal differential in Division One. Now they have a turnover, trying to add one early. It's the top line out there again. Gisevich in front, puck is loose, and the Beavers clear. If you missed our after the first period interview with Carson Gisevich, he hasn't yet achieved a college hockey hat trick. He's got two periods to get one more and get his first here in a very important game. Samosa shot just wide. Ethan Samosa, the leading goal scorer for the Beavers. They would love to get him on the board. Get an early one here, make it a one goal game, and anything can happen. Beautiful pass, but this should be icy. And it is. Colby Cohen, 
once again with us. He'll be with us in Pittsburgh as well. Your focus was those pinching defensemen, Colby. Yeah, UMass has done a great job at body positioning. And you see Zach Jones right there, a guy we highlighted right off the top of the show, keeping pucks alive. Matthew Kessel does the same thing, getting his shot through to the net. And then you see Jones pinching down yet again. Forwards love this. They love to play with defensemen that keep the puck alive. They pre-pinch and they make life better on the offensive team. UMass hoping for a penalty there. They haven't received a power play chance yet as Del Geizo fell, didn't get it. But here comes the big line. Gaudet, Chow, Gusevich. Gaudet scored two goals yesterday. Gusevich has two goals today. And here comes Bemidji. Bemidji, only five shots on goal in the first period, despite having a five on three. Irulo shot, and it's stuck in Jones's paraphernalia. Yeah, but he drops it down and gets it out. Oh, oh. Late offside, Beavers, who will take this moment to change. Here's Kessel, out there with Jones. He's a St. Louis Blue draft pick behind his own cage. But, but Chief Barry, you see how Trevino's all the way out here in the neutral zone? That's pulling Bemidji out and apart. That's the way to beat a team that is good sound structure in the neutral zone. That's a job well done for UMass getting up the ice. Everything UMass is touching right now is working for them, man. They're on the roll. And some teams, maybe you can kind of ignore that, Trevino, but when you can make first passes like this D crew can, Colby, you have to respect that guy. And both benches are talking about it. I hear Coach Tom Serratore talking about it, and I hear the UMass. It's pull the defensemen out. Don't let them cheat. Don't let them pinch. Spread them out, which will create more room in the neutral zone. Both of these teams win hockey games in the neutral zone. Didn't seem like they feared that from Wisconsin yesterday, but this UMass defensive crew is really mobile and smart and just good. But here come the Beavers. They have some numbers. Adams in the slot, back checking Laganoff. Net is off. We're going to have a whistle. We'll see where the faceoff is. And this is a really good skating team. Greg Carville, a tactician, he'll, he'll adjust, Colby. Yeah, forwards, they're flying the zone. Right off the draw there, you can see it's a jailbreak and it's a high pass. Alex Adams from Bemidji State, he leads the charge. They're not even looking back at the coverage. They see it's a one draw and they're shooting the zone. And that's a good coaching adjustment by Bemidji because they had a very challenging time breaking pucks out early in that first period. Offensive zone faceoff with the young fourth line out there, but they lose the draw. This will not be icy. But the third line of UMass is out there. Laganov, Sullivan, and Lebster. Lebster leaves it. Shot! Driscoll can't see it. The puck is loose in front. It's behind the net. The Beavers escape danger. Selinski. Played offside. Here comes Lebster again. He'll chip it and go change. There's no direct pass for Bemidji. Right there, you saw it. They're in the neutral zone. It looks like they might get a chance. They throw it up in the wall. It gets blocked. It, it, it almost offside, and the whole play is broken. That's happening play after play after play. Mika, Del Geizo, and Harding out there for you, man. Rosen comes to the point. Felix has some, some room. Looking, shot just goes wide. Trying to find a shooting lane and maybe a tip. Del Geizo, nice little reverse pass to Mika. Can't quite connect. There's another pinching Del Geizo. Oh, and it goes on goal, but Driscoll is there to save and cover. Right there from here, Felix was unbelievable. We saw him shoot it. He was looking for that far side. Great job. Puck's going up the wall again. UMass ends up winning. Right down in front of the net. Another scoring chance for UMass. So now with the offensive zone faceoff, Greg Carville, who has last change, UMass higher seed, they're the home team. He'll put the big line out there again with Gaudet. He goes against Brendan Harris. Yeah, they got six days off, Johnny. They can play all night long here, man. Dow. As Miller gets it, throws it in front. Good breakout by the Beavers. Samoza, Harris. But he loses control, and Del Geizo makes a good first pass. Chow back to Felix. Felix looking for Gusevich to chip that in. On purpose. Chow. Gaudet, big body down low, trying to use that size around the cage. He's in his body there. That's a good reverse hit right there, Butchie, creating an inch or two of space for him that keeps the puck alive. That's smart awareness offensively by UMass. More great offensive zone pressure from this line. Dominating possession numbers when they're out there. They're bigger and stronger than Bemidji, and they're taking advantage of every loose puck. They're winning every race. 
and getting them by far the most scoring chances. Top line back out there for the Beavers, Harris, Samosa, and Miller. Harris trying to go in front, but Lapina, the freshman, has a lot of good responsibility traits. Kessel will rim it around, and Trevino's on aggressively along the wall. Here he is, Trevino in front, pass Lapina, saved by Driscoll. Great A scoring chance for Josh Lapina. Butchie, if this game changes and Bemidji gets back in, remember this play. Yeah, 3 nothing would have been 3 nothing. Titanic. she was over. Kessel can't break it out. Turnover by Miller. Now some room. Irulo comes in. Irulo, kind of a blind pass. Trevino is there. Can't quite collect. Sillinger. Bemidji set up now. He got a chance, but a nice block shot by Trevino, and he'll take off. He stumbles. He'll throw it across, though, to wait. Comes back out to the neutral zone in Sillinger. Irulo. Number 14, leading goal scorer, a leading point scorer in this team, short side high. I hit the post. Good job by Lindbergh to raise up and use the post and his body to close up that gap that was there for a second. And yeah, that was the only clean, easy entry Bemidji has had all game, which give credit to UMass's defense. Sullivan, nice move, wrist shot block, and Driscoll will glove it out of midair after it hits the end bird. Wow. Bobby Trevino, what a move here, and he feeds his center iceman, Josh Lapina, right there. 3-0, three, 3-0. Three nothing, three nothing. But a save by Drizzy to keep it 2-0 UMass. Great to have the Muddy Ducks back with us on Disney+. Plus. All new episodes. Gordon Bombay looks like he forgot how to shoot Butchie. Yeah, I think, he, I think he took the last 15 years off <laughs> playing cornhole or something. I don't know. <laughs> Back on the ice, Bob Bay. The winner of this game goes to the Frozen Four in Pittsburgh. UMass leads 2-0 here early second period. John Butchercross, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen will be with you in Pittsburgh for the 2021 Frozen Four. The winner of this game will be the first team to qualify. Meanwhile, Quinnipiac leads Minnesota State 2-0. That's a first-round game for them. These two, those two games went on simultaneously. After our game tonight, Minnesota Duluth and North Dakota. Also, Omaha and the Golden Gophers hooking up. So a great Saturday of action. Five NCAA hockey tournament games on your way. UMass is just flying right now. They're winning every battle. They're making plays. They're getting the puck out. They're keeping it in when they should. All they need now is a power play, which they haven't had yet. Yeah, they got one in the bag up coming. Yep. 11 shots for UMass, 7 for Bemidji State. But no scoring chances. The one scoring chance they had, they missed the net. Right. They did hit one crossbar yeah. graze. Yeah, which doesn't count as a shot in net. Two, two shots this period for Bemidji. There's another shot for UMass, but it's right in the belly from Del Geizo into the gut of Zach Driscoll. Hey, this reminder, ESPN will present our 16th consecutive men's ice hockey championship from Pittsburgh, doubleheader Thursday the 8th, ESPN 2, national title game on ESPN, Saturday night the 10th. More information, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. Oh, broken oh. stick for Del Geizo. That's the worst healing. After butchie. another oh. face-off won by Gaudet, who's now seven for nine. Gaudet with it. In front! Hat trick! Hat trick! Hat trick! Carson DeSevich. A natural hat trick for his first college hockey hat trick. And the Minutemen lead the Beavers three to nothing. What happens here, the stick breaks, but the puck comes right to him. You know, he could look like it could have been a breakaway. Puck goes out. This is just power. One hand on a stick, taking it to the net. Skits. Skavich in front of the net. Wow, look at this. I just love that. Putting the pipe down. That's called putting the pipe down. Yeah, Jake Gaudet has been a man on a mission. He had a season that was a little bit up and down. But boy, did he protect the puck there well, Barry. He took that thing to the net. He lowered his shoulder. And he gave his linemate a great opportunity to slam dunk his first hat trick. And Butchie, you called that one. <laughs> Kobe, you want that to be your action shot when you're getting your cards first time in your career? That's a good one, Barry. Uh, you want that to be your card, man. Pipe down, protecting the puck. You look like Bobby Orr. 
Well, if you missed our end of the first period interview, my first question to Gusevich was, have you ever gotten a hat trick in college hockey? He said no, it was one of his goals. You should have said, nat said natural, John. Just a cherry on top. But absolutely, a little, little extra special to be a natural hat trick. Yeah. Three goals scored in a row by the same player. That's what Carson Gusevich has done today. Well, you know things are going right. When a defenseman stick breaks, that could easily be a breakaway the other way. Harder I work, the luckier I get, Bolt. <laughs> and again, it all started with the Gaudette face-off win. He is seven for nine winning face-off. That is off. The whistle should blow. That's <laughs> funny. Funny moment there as you saw Ross Armour trying to put the net back on because his team had possession and maybe a chance to score. So here it is three goals for Carson Gusevich. And he's going to score goals in every which way in this game. The deflection in front of the net, planning himself, body positioning, stopping on top of the crease. This is a player that has a lot of good habits for the Minutemen and he deserves those goals for putting himself in the right position. Got those steely blue eyes through that cage right there. Hey, Colby, how about those guys will get an apple and a broken stick slap shot at hey, that? You, you, you heard me. Assist. I went, oh, no, because I know that feeling. It's happened to me. You're walking into a slap shot. Your stick gives out. It's a terrible, helpless feeling. But hey, when it's going good, it's going good, guys. Yeah, he ends up getting an assist. Trevino gets wrestled to the ground. They're trying to draw another penalty. That should be a penalty on number 17, Ross Armour. And I think it is. So UMass will get that first power play of the day. A little bit of a Roman Greco wrestling match in front of the Minutemen bench. And that was cut by our NCHC officiating crew. And so the Minutemen will go on the power play. Well, a tough thing just got tougher, obviously. 3 nothing is, you know, tough to catch up. 4 nothing. I can't, I can't sit there and tell you they got a good chance of winning, so... Bemidji's got to find a way to get some energy and get a goal and get back in this game. Yeah, and look for Zach Jones to run this power play for UMass. He'll be at the top of the point. Kessel will be off to his right side. He's a big shooter, and they'll move around a little bit, but those are the two marquee guys that control the puck. There's their Sillinger winning another draw. Now when he got, got that's had a good day, but he doesn't get that one. The top line back out there on this power play, and the top two defensive pair as well. Jones and Kessel. Here comes Chow with speed in the neutral zone. Wins the race around the corner. Goes into the corner. Throws it around to Gaudet. He'll swipe it over to Kessel. Kessel goes DDD -D -D to Jones. Jones, what a nice pass in the slot to Gusevich. Puck is loose. What a pass by Zach Jones. Back the other way. Sillinger shorthanded. Saved by Lindbergh. His eighth of the game. He's eight for eight. Somoza was in the slot for a chance, but he healed it. This is their best shift, and there's only four of them out there. Just three shots this period for Bemidji, almost halfway through. Chow, he'll ring it around, and Gusevich will get there. Use his big, strong body. Chow tried to center it to Gaudet, who gloves it. He needs to touch it, it would have been a hand pass. Smart play by Chow to let that one go and let Gaudet touch it. Good pick up there, Butchie. Turnover, Delgaizo, shot, blocked by Kyle Lose. Gusevich cycles to Gaudet. This top line's been out there a while. They'll probably want to change. They're over a minute now on this shift. Bollinger. Keeps it in. He'll wait to dump it back in. And new fresh line out there for UMass. Waits, Lapina, and Trevino. Short-handed. 40 seconds left. Just one shot on the power play thus far for UMass. They were one for four on the power play yesterday. Gaudet got a power play goal. I like the way they're playing, though. They're much more aggressive right now. They're attacking. They're finishing some checks. Good to see the energy. Mark Delgaizo. Back to Bollinger. Plays catch with Delgaizo. D to D to D to D. Delgaizo can't get that one, so wait time. What a pass, Lapina. Short side save by Driscoll. Josh Lapina has had two point blank chances. They found something because that's the way the goal was scored from behind the goal line, out in front into the slot area. That was a great scoring chance there, the exact same way. So they've got a weakness somehow of Bemidji from behind the net to the slot. Best PK unit in America, Bemidji State kills that penalty. So the score remains 3 0. We're midway through the hockey game. Webster dumps it in. Ryan Sullivan for checking for UMass. Cleared around by Brad Johnson and out of the zone. Johnson out there with Wills Mullet. A lot of good communication on the ice for UMass. Sillinger blocked by Kessel. 
Back the other way comes Sullivan. They do a nice job, but you're really communicating those short support plays when the puck is stuck along the wall, especially on the near bench side. Credit to them. That's something that they preach. Greg Carville, Ben Barr, Jared DeMichael. Three really good coaches. Another power play. Tripping. Power play UMass, number two of the day. Looks like Kirkup's going to go on the trip. Del Geizo, that's another power play that he drew. Josh Lapina, the freshman, outstanding first year at UMass. He'll be an impact player in Hockey East for a couple of years. Had two chances point blank. 0 for 2 thus far. Power play for UMass when we return. returning to ESPN and these guys will be in the NHL one day they'll get a chance we'll see what happens but Kessel Del Gaizo, and Jones looking really good and right now Jones and Kessel are out there on the power play the big line once again out there for Greg Carville and UMass boy boy to the Rangers like that Zach Jones mm -hmm. Kessel Jones There's Chow. Chow's looking to make the play the big body, Jusevich, oh, another, another one. UMass will go on the five on three. That's I don't think this is going to be a five-minute penalty, though. My initial reaction, they're going to call boarding, but I don't think this is a five-minute hit. I don't think it should have been either, Colby. I think he, it wasn't really oh. vicious. He could have hit him a lot harder. Definitely a board. Definitely a two-minute. Yeah the right call the officials have done a nice job today they've let the right things go they've called the right things I, I give them credit for what they've done so far in this game Nick Krebsbach Ryan Hersey are the referees Tyler Lifrig and Justin Hills are the lineys all from the NCHC conference as the puck gets by Mark Del Geizo. this just shows you UMass has two power play units that they like because Kessel and Jones are off the ice they've got Del Geizo and the freshman Bollinger out of the five on three so they're a very balanced team. Keep everybody fresh for the for the long game that UMass is playing up by 3-0. They can really manage ice time and manage matchups. And Bollinger brings it in. Nice little pass in the slot to wait. Who will go back to Del Geizo. Trevino Lapina. That line's been really good lately. They've been scoring opportunities. Del Geizo can shoot at number two. They'll try to set him up for a one time. Try to go to Lapina, did Bollinger, but he couldn't complete. You don't really need to do that right now. Three nothing. Just make sure it gets to the net, gets your shots. Make sure there's no, you know, shorthanded chances. That would be a backbreaker. They got everything going their way. Just play smart. Five on three for 40 more seconds. Plenty of room out there for Jones to operate. And yeah, now they'll look for Kessel, Butchie. Wrist shot. Blocker save. Rebound down low. Can't get to it. And cleared again. They'll try to get Kessel on his offside here. Jones will try to draw a guy to him. And then they'll look for that one-timer to the number four for UMass. Kessel. Down low to seven. She's got three goals looking for four. Chow, big line back out there with Kessel and Jones. You see the time winding out in the five on three. There's your switch. Just set up for the one-timer if they want it. Kessel's waiting for it. Here we go. Nope, it comes to Chow. Chow, Kessel, bad angle, takes it off his boot. Back to Jones. Five on three, over. Chow's open, but he goes back to Jones. Kessel, Chow, now they're playing catch instead of shooting. Power play for 13 more seconds. You see the clock. No shots on the five on three. Yeah, Chow's ready to shoot that puck when it comes through the box for the penalty kill. He's got a really good opportunity. Great block shot by Carson Gusevich. Kessel can't clear it. Even strength, five on five, deflected a couple of times. And Gusevich will just softly try to clear, but he doesn't. Shot by Lucas Silver over the net. He'll go behind the net for support. Puck hit the netting. Face off to the left. Oh, Philip Lindbergh. They got to make sure they get the puck to the net on that power play. A five on three, you got to shoot the puck. Carson Gusevich, we mentioned the natural hat trick and the uh, block he's, shot. He's trying to get the defensive player of the night. He's trying to get the offensive player of the night. He's trying to get the leadership award. Unbelievable. He's on fire. 6 3, 2 15. He, does, he looks really big out there. 
Looks big and powerful, Johnny. Just eight shots on goal for the Beavers. UMass came into this game 8-0-3 in their last 11. They haven't lost a game since January the 18th. That was at Boston University. BU was eliminated today from the tournament by St. Cloud State. That was in overtime. They lost that game. Since the new year, they've really gotten to go, and they still have some injuries. They're not quite at full strength, but they got a lot going for them. And right now, they're looking good to get to Pittsburgh in their second consecutive Frozen Four after never getting there in school history. Yeah, I wonder, guys, two years ago, if this was a one-and-done thing, if, if this was a team that was going to sustain it. They might even look like a better team than when they had Kale McCarr, and I know that's a crazy thing. That's this, is a, this is a complete team. Wrist shot high and wide as Anthony Del Gaizo. All right, Barry, maybe I take it back. Oh, here comes Bemidji. They got a chance here. Slap shot, another block shot. That time, Bell Del Gaizo. Redirection to front. Lowe's had an excellent chance. The defenseman was down by the net. Bemidji State is going for it now. They need another goal. None so far after six yesterday. El Gaizo clears it. UMass 0 for 3 on the power play. They have 10 block shots today. Bemidji with seven. They got her going. UMass got her going on. Right now, kind of on cruise control. Yep. They have determined, they have dictated. The terms of this game. A natural hat trick for Gisevich. Three nothing lead. A very good defensive team. It was one of their points of emphasis before the season. Discipline. Not a lot of penalties. Defense. Special teams are good. Loose in front. Wait. Backhander. No. As the Beavers come back the other way. Two on two, Jones and Kessel back. Slide over to Armour, big save by Lindbergh. Good push off, side to side, denies Ross Armour. Puck loose in front, Jones looks to clear. Can't, slap shot blocked. Wade tries to chip it out. Could have a two on one, but they already get it first with Brad Johnson. Latina and Trevino almost broke free. UMass should have some chances at some odd man rushes until the Beavers score again. Not a lot of whistles right now. We're playing. Irulo held a bit. Nothing called. Puck comes back to the point. Johnson He's out there with Tyler Vold. Irulo. That'll be coming up on UMass. Probably a hooking on Zach Jones, it looks like. You can hear Jones. He's holding my stick. He's holding my stick. <laughs> So when we come back, Bemidji State with an all-important power play. Carson Gisevich having the college hockey game of his a hat trick in the tournament. Big weekend of women's college one? basketball tonight, eight o'clock Eastern Time, ESPN two, Arizona and Texas A&M. Continues tomorrow afternoon, one Eastern, Georgia Tech, South Carolina. Later on ESPN, Oregon swears off against Louisville, followed by Texas and Maryland. You can watch every game on the app, as always. Big weekend of women's hoop. How about those UConn women taking care of business and moving on in the NCAA tournament? Gino Oriyama and the squad heading to the Elite Eight again. I thought we might have seen UConn in the men's hockey tournament this year. They were close. They were pushing. Mike Cavanaugh's building a good program there in UConn. Going to have that on-campus arena soon in a couple of years. And they were a good hockey East team for UMass and others to play this year. Right now, this hockey East team is looking good. UMass up 3-0, but they need to kill off this power play. Here's Bemidji State's chance to get one back. Sillinger, Irula, towards an effort. That's an easy take and steal by Bollinger, yeah. who will get it out. Nothing's working right now for uh, Bemidji. They made a good entry with the, uh, with the uh, slingshot, and they just couldn't get her set up in the zone. UMass has blocked 13 shots and only allowed nine on net so far. You wouldn't know it by Greg Cargill during the TV timeouts. He gives it to his boys hard. He coaches this squad very hard, Barry. That's uh, 
You know that as a player, he demands a lot of you. He demands that you outwork the opposition. That's all you can ask for as a, as a player. He's making you a better man. He's making you a better player. Yeah, he had some choice words for his defense to Matthew Kessel, who he didn't like the chance he took. He told him to keep the game in front of him, and that's what you got to do. You hold your guys accountable, and then that's an infection. Well, if you're doing it to everybody, then it becomes contagious, like you said. You, you, you can't get mad at a, a coach giving it to you if every, he's giving it to everybody else also. Well, and when you pick on a marquee player, Eric Martin fans. I think that sends a message. Slopper just wide by Brendan Harris. Bemidji State set up pretty good right here. In the slot, knocked down, open in front, shot off the post! Rebound save! Rebound save! Oh, what a chance for the Beavers! What a good play by Samoza Bushi. Post and two saves by Lindbergh, and the score remains 3 0. Sillinger at the point. Tries to throw it across, but a nice play by Laganoff to block it and clear it. Wow, what a chance for the Beavers. That power play looked very good. They had multiple chances. They had a wide open net. Golden opportunity, but they hit their second post. Breaking it free now. Jones out of the box in the zone. Throws it. Screen in front. Gets by Driscoll. Can't cover, but no damage. Laganov looks to throw it in front. Jones will go right to the bench for UMass. As the Minutemen now. Here comes the one minute remaining call in Bridgeport. Still 3 0. Ty Farmer with some speed. Just onside, not onside. Three times Bemidji State has hit iron today. Here's the latest one. Well, let's look at the battle in front. Great oh. job. There's Samoza right in front. There's the loose one. He comes right out to him. He knocks it in almost out of the air. He just can't find a way to put it in the net right now. Everything's going UMass's way. Yeah, Lindbergh's ability to hold that pole with his right leg. He's able to push off and fight for both of those rebounds. And that's impressive goaltending. I know Andrew Raycroft sitting in the studio is going to like that one. Three for Adava make you holla. <laughs> Ethan Samoza, that, you're right, Cole, but that was a sweet little first move he got when he hit the bar. Still had a couple of whacks at it, but the captain couldn't quite put it home. You know it's not your night when that doesn't go in for you. 30 seconds left in period number two. Dalgaizo has the man in front. Trevino saved by Driscoll. Trevino behind the net. Smolik on him. Trevino slippery in front off the skate. And he takes his hand off of his stick and covers it with his blocker, does Zach Driscoll. as really good shift for Bobby Trevino. I'll tell you, Driscoll's been good uh, for uh, Bemidji. They can't complain whatsoever about their goaltending. Good work in front. you got lots of bodies in there. Good defensive help for his teammates. And Driscoll finds the loose puck among the legs and, and pulls her out. So he's, he's been good in this game. That's a great save. 18 seconds left here in the second. Gaudet out there again. See if he can win another faceoff. He does. Chow, that's going to be a penalty, I believe, on Bemidji State for interference. Let's see if it's Aaron Miller. I believe it is. Maybe not. No, it's Gaudet, apparently. So he won the faceoff, and then they felt, I guess, that he interfered. And so, once again, Bemidji will have a late second period power play and an early fresh ice power play in the third if they don't score. God, what I, let's see what he did. Is yeah. this interference, Barry Melrose? I, what? I'm not sure where. I don't think so. That, that is the wrong call. Yeah, well, he's, he's now out of the box. Because that clearly was not interference. No, but they're sending someone to the box, and I, I had a hard time finding a penalty there. Did seven? you? Let's find 11. So now Carson Gusevich has three goals, a block shot, and a penalty. But he kept his feet moving. If you keep your feet moving and you skate in the in the lane, usually you're not getting called for a penalty. We'll have to go back and look again yeah. the next opportunity we get. But I, guys, I didn't see it. Let's see if we get a quick whistle here. Warning on the faceoff for Brendan Harris, but he wins it anyway. Slapper from the point. Lindbergh never saw it. But Sillinger couldn't quite hit the net. Just missed. Second period winding now. See if Bemidji can get one more good chance. They do in front. Saved by Samoza. Knocked down. Puck is loose. Shot. Saved. Block shot by Waite. And the period comes to an end. 
A fresh ice power play when we begin the third, but Philip Lindbergh saw some heat late in this frame, but he keeps it 3 0. Samoza again. Backhand, forehand, drying up under the bar, just like the other one that hit the post. Great block by Bodies, Wade. Bodies in front. But look how calm Lindbergh is this whole time, Barry. I mean, there is just no panic as he moves he's around playing. that blue paint. He's playing at a different speed right now, man. He's seeing the puck. He's got a 3 0 lead. He loves his teammates right now. Moving on to the Frozen Four in Pittsburgh in a while. Things are good. So there he is with the body story of this game is Carson Gusevich. He had a goal yesterday and he picked up today right back where he left off. Doing it in just about every which way. Scoring goals on the paint, tipping shots from the point, and he's been a difference maker for the Minutemen. He sure has. First hat trick in UMass tournament history for the school and the first college hockey hat trick for Carson Gusevich. They're going in, John, to find a way to score one goal. They're not worried about three, they're worried about one. Oh, we got him back. Carson Gusevich, you got your college hockey hat trick. What are you gonna do now? We're gonna kill this penalty off and then win the game. So what did it feel like when that thing went win? What's working so well for your big top line? Um, right now, God's is skating really well. Um, Chow's playing the way he always plays, really, really creative with the puck, making good plays, and I'm just standing in front. What's the coach's main message on the bench during the break, uh, during the timeouts? What's his thing he's just hammering yet, time no, and time again? No more penalties um, and simplify our game. What happened on that last penalty where you, you looked confused? We couldn't see much there. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no comment. Yeah, no comment. good answer. <laughs> Go get hydrated, my man. All right, thank you. One period away from a ticket to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Carson Gusevich. I'm just going to stand in front of the net and get my first college hockey hat trick. Welcome back to Bridgeport, Connecticut. The Bemidji State Beavers take the ice with the power play, and it's an important one. They're down 3-0. The winner of this game goes to Pittsburgh and the Frozen Four. So Barry, they'll have a fresh ice power play to begin the third as they get a call late in that second period. Yeah, they got a chance right now. Three goals down in the third period. We've seen uh, these games change uh, very, very quickly. It's off a draw right there. You're going to see him number 11. He's going to the net. That, that, that's a borderline call. Uh, you could almost call him for interference because each player has got a right to the ice. I, I didn't really see anything... Uh, particularly egregious right there but uh, bottom line is right now we got a chance here for the for the uh, for the uh, for Bemidji, Bemidji State, State here they've got a fresh ice Barry and you, you can never discount a team on the power play that has a chance to zip it around on fresh ice well this is the, this is the this is where they got to get one right here three goals down 20 minutes left not a lot of time Frozen Four is on the line here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. John Butchergoss, Barry Melrose, Colby Cohen, you heard him as well. We'll be in Pittsburgh for the Frozen Four. UMass was in the last Frozen Four we had in Buffalo, losing in the final to the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs, who play tonight with a chance to return to the Frozen Four. No contest win, quote unquote, against Michigan. They play top seed North Dakota tonight. As the Bulldogs trying to make it three natties in a row. Meanwhile, here are the Beavers fighting for their college hockey lives. Down 3 nothing. Chow with a nice clear. They, they just can't get in there and set it up, John. If you get one and done, you get going down, dude, all over again. Well, Barry, how about the UMass D? They get back out on the puck, and then they use each other as outlets. You don't see them wrapping it around to try to clear it out. It's four-foot passes and out, and that was a perfect example of it. Uh, they believe in themselves right now. Colby, they're on fire. Sillinger, short side. Lindbergh has that post. Net lifts up but stays on. Owen Sillinger rims it around to Miller. Stick battle along the wall. Shot Irulo into the mitt of Lindbergh with Carson Gisevich in the box. He seems to be tracking the puck well, eh, Butchie? It oh, seems yeah. like he sees everything coming in on him. He's controlling his rebounds, Lindbergh, for UMass. Doing a really nice job. And when we talked to him before the tournament started, he talked about how he really loves to model his game after two career. Carson Gisevich comes in the box and will 
exited soon, has three goals, all three goals, and natural hat trick for Gusevich. He's a redshirt senior, named captain of St. Lawrence in his senior year, got injured opening weekend as he steps out of the box, missed the entire rest of the season, transfers to UMass with a chance to win, and here he is, about to go to the Frozen Four. Here come the Minutemen, shot saved by Driscoll on the hard wrist shot from Jerry Hardy. And this fourth line of UMass. Hardy, good job for checking right in front of our ESPN logo. Knocks down a man, dishes it out. And a good job by his centerman, George Mika. Yeah, Hardy and Del Gaijo, the two forwards, the wingers who make up the fourth line, they've been impactful all weekend. They've spent more time in the offensive zone and drawing penalties than all the lines that we've seen out for Bemidji. I mean, when your fourth line is out playing the other team's top lines, you're going well. And then just giving everyone a rest. The coach believes in them, the players believe in them, they want them to succeed, they want them to get ice time. It's just a great team. You can just see the young guys being taught by the older guys. That's how programs become elite. Short shifts for the Minutemen right now. Ooh, hard hit by Somoza, knocks down Felix, who is playing the puck in the air. No more than a minute, Johnny, no more than a minute shift. Frozen four will begin a week from next Thursday. Hey. Mass will have time if they can finish this off to go back and practice. See if they can get any injured players back. Right now, they want to finish the job. Up 3-0 against Bemidji State. Trevino out there with... Josh Lapina and Garrett Waits. All four lines have been effective for the Minutemen today. Trevino, Waits, go rimming around the net. Trevino along the wall, gets knocked down. Lapina tries to support a bit too late. Irulo takes it out. Trevino's a physical player. He'll give it back to you. You know that. Occasionally some commotion along those benches when both teams are changing. Child, pressure's still in jail. Tries to force a turnover, comes out, and back in. There's Jake Cadet. What a mountain of a man he has been. Kasevich can't keep it in. Shows you the value of a big, experienced center iceman. So there he is, Carson Kasevich, big Buffalo Bills fan, member of Bills Mafia, red shirt senior. After a, an injury at St. Lawrence, He's got this bonus year, and he's taking advantage of it. It's a great story, John, uh, to be captain of one team and, and go and, and, and move to another team. You know, it's a lot of moxie there, a lot of character. And it's not just one team to another. Greg Carvo came from St. Luke, St. Lawrence, yeah. sorry. It's it, yeah. And so did assistant coach Jared DeMichael, and, and they brought some guys with them. Jerry Hardy, off wing. Glove save by Driscoll. Both line back out on the ice for UMass. They really trust these guys, and it brings your whole bench up. Reward them. Your fourth line getting action yep. like this. Reward them. They deserve it. Farmer goes in front of his own net, almost loses it. But Mika is there to support him. And the Minuteman will be able to get it out. Knocked down there. Play continues. Farmer goes back to him. take this thing five minutes oh. at a time. They had a man wide open in front of the net, too. Couldn't get him to puck. Oh, that was a big slash on the hand of Del Gaijo. It's getting a little chippy out there. Bollinger just came back to the bench hurting, too. Sabozo waiting for that shot in the slot. Now up top. Del Gaijo very careful there as he saw the opponent's back and eased up on the hit. Yeah, you don't want to wire someone into the boards with the back first and get a five-minute major against you. Up here. Just a methodical performance by the Minutemen right now. Business-like, Johnny, business-like. Absolutely. Wait. Block continues to roll. Trevino chips it to himself. Can't quite get to Driscoll in time as he covers it off. Bobby Trevino and the UMass Minutemen, 14-19 away from Frozen Four participant number one. What if I told you a man was looking for his first college hockey hat trick? Carson, have, do you have a hat trick yet in your college career? Uh, no, I do not have a hat trick. All that right. was uh, one of my goals coming in, but not yet.
Carson Gusevich, you got your college hockey hat trick. What are you going to do now? We're going to kill this penalty off and then win the game. <laughs> Good stuff. I wanted to say I'm going I to did, Disney World. I, oh, he didn't, I, he didn't I, bite I, on I fed it to him on a platter, Colby. <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom Brady needs to give him a lesson on what do you say after you you make the big play there. You you laid it up for him, Butchie. And, and I could hook him up with Disney passes, too, you know. We're you cast know, members. You know a guy. I'll take care of him. He deserves it after he graduates. Well, Gisevich is out there again with Oliver Chow and Jake Cadet trying for four. That's a Texas hat trick, right, Barry? You get yep, four of it them. Is. Everything bigger in Texas. And you go five, that's a Saskatchewan hat trick. <laughs> oh, I knew that was coming. UDA. <laughs> He's got time. Meanwhile, the Beavers, you never know. You get a couple quick goals and you make it one goal game and everything changes in an instant in college hockey. Sillinger short side, but Lindbergh does a real good job protecting his short side. Staying away from weird deflections. So, Gusevich had that beautiful goal yesterday. He's had a gigantic weekend. And just think, you're, you, know, you go to St. Lawrence, you had a season ending injury, and you wonder what's next. And then to make the transfer to UMass, and now you're on television at the NCAA tournament. You get your first career Hattie, your first career Shorty, the first tournament hat trick for Greg Carville and UMass in school history. Him and Goddad are so good together. They work, they're big, they're physical, they're good around the net. You, know, you can see why they're winning a lot of games. That's a tough group. That's a tough line, man. Now he's 14-02 away from participating in a frozen four, which good is a good decision to move an A to, yeah. uh, to school. Turned out to be a good move. So yeah. far, so good. Shot block, rebound, high over the, into the netting. Puck came on edge, and Owen Sillinger lifted it over the glass and out of play. Philip Lindbergh, 1357, trying to backstop this team to their second consecutive Frozen Four. If you, if you go by the board, it, you know, 21 shots, certainly uh, they haven't seen a ton of shots. Uh, you know, Bemidji's played a, a, not a bad defensive game. They just haven't been able to create any offense. The only downer for Greg Carvo and the Minutemen, their power play is not working right no. now. 0 for 5 in the Hockey East playoffs. And that's exactly what they needed tonight, John, with the power play. And yeah. they had a long five-on-three, yeah. Butchie. Yeah. They had at least a minute and 30-plus seconds on a five-on-three that looked unorganized. The one thing they lack is that sniper, that forward sniper. They, let's face it, they play a big, grinding, big-man game. Bobby Trevino will try to make it four to nothing. He doesn't. Zach Driscoll with the nice save. Shut down that five-hole with Trevino bearing down on him to really put this thing away. Lapina can't get it behind the net. Pinching is Mark Del Geizo. Back comes Rosen. Tape to tape. Nice job to Irulo. But that play is just offside. And yeah, Lucas Sillinger tried to fight his way back on side. But right now, guys, it is all UMass. And Bobby Trevino, who has been the heart and soul player a lot of this season, he gets almost a 200-foot breakaway, tries to go five-hole. But, you know, Zach Driscoll's made a lot of good saves for his team. I mean, he's been blitzed at times throughout this game. It hasn't been a ton of shots, but there's been a lot of quality yeah. opportunities against him. Yeah, point-blank chances. Lapita's had a couple. Denied him twice. Shoot. Shoot. As the Beavers, seven minutes gone in the third period. They're keeping that neutral zone plugged with uh, white jerseys, man. You're not getting trapped anywhere on the ice. Exactly what the coach is selling on the bench. And stay out of the penalty box. We're taking enough penalties. Don't give them any opportunities. Their power play has been bad. Bemidji's power play has not been good. Don't give it a chance to get going and make this a 3-1 game. You see the shots on goal, updated, top part of your TV set, phone or tablet. 23-15, UMass lead, shots on goal. Jones, nice pass up off the skates of Mika. That serves as a dump in. Cleared right back out. Kessel and Jones, the two defensemen, Colby Cohen. Highlighted before the game. And that's a good dump right there. Jones gets it by the goaltender. UMass has done that really well. They dump the puck with a purpose. It's either soft and they're able to retrieve it, or it's hard and it's mostly gotten by the goaltender all game, which hasn't given Bemidji a chance to really set up and break the puck out. Those are small details, as this one goes for icing, that are very important to possessing the puck. Coming up next, here, on ESPNU, the favorite to win this championship this year, North Dakota.
against a team that's won the last two national championships, the Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs. Should be a good one from Fargo. The Bulldogs, man, they never let us down. The, win tough. the winner of that game goes to Pittsburgh and will play the winner of this game in Pittsburgh. Skull Gusevich almost had his fourth as he wiped across the top of the crease. Godet, Chow. Chow, nice move. He faked going back to the point and brought it back down low. Gusevich slaps it back to the point, but it gets by Del Geizo. They just look a little stronger than Bemidji, faster than Bemidji. You know, Bemidji looked so good last night against uh, Wisconsin. We just haven't seen that same flurry of, of power and speed and aggressiveness that we saw yesterday. Lapina with all kinds of skating room. Hair flying in the wind, I love Mike Madano. High off the glass, it bounces right back in front, but Wait can't get it to go. Black-haired Mike Madano, eh? Eric Martin, short side, save Lindbergh. Brendan Harris battling in the corner, out there with Ethan Somoza. And Eric Martin on this line now. God, UMass's defensive positioning on those battles, Barry. The way they back each other up and their poise. Trevino deflected into the netting by number 22, Tyler Gold. That puck at the netting, the play should stop, but it continues. Martin, that hit high on the netting, but the officials didn't see it, so play continues. Laganoff with it now. Both benches side. Yeah. One hands it. Slapper, that one in the net again. <laughs> that time we get the whistle. Yeah, I don't think there's any coming back on that one. Carson Gusevich with three, almost got four. It oh. did. Oh. Man, he's, he just, he can't get enough of that puck right now. He's on fire. Yeah, it looked like Jake Gaudet tipped that one first, he and did. then Gusevich took another whack at it. But, I mean, these guys have really turned it on at the right time. This first line for UMass has been a little bit up and down, and the Trevino line has done more of the scoring. But, guys, in this tournament, that line with Gaudet and Gusevich has been phenomenal. Get hot at the right time, man. That's what you want. And this is called the right time of the year, no doubt about that. Five shots on goal for Gusevich. Three have gone in. Kessel aggressively pinching still here in the third period out there with Jones. That helps your shooting percentage. Yes, it does. Frozen up. <laughs> so, some line shifting from Tom Saratori. You see Miller is no longer on that top line. He's moved him around. Moved up Eric Martin to play with Harrison Samoza. Miller was so good yesterday, too. He played great. He just hasn't got going in this game. Yeah, he's down here with Carter Jones and yeah. Sam Selensky now, just trying something different. Fourth line out for UMass, George the, Mika. The thing is, it, it's not like one line has been bad or two lines have been bad. The whole team has had no offense. A little deflated, especially when they went down 2 nothing. Del Geizo, he's from Mika, Naples, Florida native. Mark Del Geisel out there with his brother. Another shot in the net after it's tipped by Sam Selensky. I think the hardest pill to swallow if you're Bemidji State is you're getting beat at your own game. These two teams, they have similar styles of play. They like to really focus on defense first. They make it hard in the neutral zone. They're bigger, they're faster. And when you're getting beat at your own game, that can really take the wind out of your sail. And I think we've seen that in this third period because UMass has really dominated the third period. Yeah, as we get back to Bemidji's power play, like you said, a five on three, you got to score in a game like this. Elsewhere, Quinnipiac leads Minnesota State two to one midway through the third period. It's a semifinal game. It's on ESPN three. UMass can't clear. Slap from the point just wide of Lindbergh. There's a stick left of him. Chow. Can't get it out. Grabs a man. Has it again. And he'll dump it in. No, should not be ice. That was the Bemidji bench calling that, Butchie. <laughs> great audio work by our guys, though, in the truck, huh? Yeah, the microphones are great here in Bridgeport. Rob Frateroli, director. Josh Hoffman. Producer here in Bridgeport will be with you at the Frozen Four. Director Bob gets all kinds of new toys for Pittsburgh, Barry. That's the big game. Yep. He's got like 39 cameras, I think, or something. Robots, the whole thing. Got to bring the truck. I think they're going to have a Barry Melrose can at the Frozen Four. We should. 
one shot, extreme close up all yep. game. Yep. I think it's part of our mega cast. Make sure the color <laughs> the works. ESPN2 will be just an ISO on Barry for two and a half hours. <laughs> I'll watch that. Just You can smell the muscle right through the camera. We've all sat in uh, ESPN2 for a couple hours. That's not a problem whatsoever. Webster, a shot saved by Driscoll. Wagonov <laughs> for checking. UMass ain't lighting up, man. They're flying. They're flying. Eight and a half to go. That's offside as Selensky goes sprawling and sliding on the Bridgeport, Connecticut ice. Frustration incorporated for the Beavers as they have been blinded by the light of Carson Gusevich. Short-handed goal. Two more. It's a Hattie. That's correct, North Dakota. They last won in 2016 in where? Tampa, you got it. And they are the favorite this year for 2021 in Pittsburgh. I guarantee you, my buddy Dane Jackson will have those guys ready to play. They got a good team. Solensky skates it out. Eight minutes and 20 seconds left for UMass. Five shots on goal this period for UMass. Six for Bemidji State. Ross Armour behind the net. Battling. Kessel will be able to clear it out. This might be icy. They don't have their arm up. <laughs> the linesman went to blow the whistle, Butchie. Yeah. He did not know what to do yeah. there, but I think it hit off the shin pads of the Bemidji defender at the blue line. I think that's why it wasn't an icing. He looked back at his other linesman. He didn't have his arm up, so that's why he didn't blow it. The puck went on edge, and it rolled a lot faster than I think they thought it was going to roll. I thought maybe the linesman got a place to go. <laughs> Seven and a half to go for the UMass Minutemen to return to the Frozen Four. Oh, boy. Turnover. Driscoll tries to cover Ken. Open man in front. They can't find Harding. He's there now. They'll try to get it to him again. Does Del Geizo. Del Geizo and Harding. Now the centerman, George Mika. Pushing and shoving along the wall. Three big strong men right here for the Minutemen. In front. Harding. Shot. Del Geizo can't get it to go. Anthony Del Geizo almost getting his second goal of the season. Mark Del Geizo's brother, who's more of a role player for UMass and has really settled in as a reliable fourth line guy who plays the right way for the Minutemen. Arulo uh, deflected by Caudet. Left point shot blocked in front and chipped out by Felix high off the glass. He'll change. It's getting nasty out there. I'll tell you, Bemidji's going to get their ton of flesh. <laughs> Loafed off the boot of Harris. Chopped there by Kasevich. Here comes Eric Martin. Martin out there with Harris and Somoza. Maybe needs a couple of quick ones to set up the pull the goalie. They still should start thinking about pulling their goalie about now. They need three. Basically, the situation uh, Wisconsin was in last night. Same thing. Harris rims it around under six to go now we'll keep an eye on Zach Driscoll but he has planted inside his net watching action in front just goes wide as Eric Martin had a chance now it's cleared no icing and UMass will change all five skaters picked off by Trevino he's just gonna hang high at second four, we'll just scope the blue line and try to pick off those passes. Trevino comes back, gets it out of the zone. Just over five to go for UMass to return to the Frozen Four. Great communication there between Lindbergh, the goaltender, and Zach Jones, the defender. You hear Jones yelling, leave it, leave it, leave it. The goaltender listens, it's up and it's out, and it's back out in the neutral zone. And those are good details, especially come playoff time. You've got to have clean handoffs between goaltender and defenseman. Get up here. Under five to go. Mark Del Geizo was a part of that team two years ago in Buffalo. He scored 
the overtime goal to beat Denver to get to the championship game. He'll look forward to have another chance at a frozen four. Nice play there out of midair by Mark Del Gaizo. He'll throw it across. Nashville's got a couple of good defensemen in this NCAA tournament. David Ferentz from BU. He's a top 10 Hobie guy. He's a Nashville pick. Mark Del Gaizo. Blocker saved by Driscoll. They need him, Colby. They need him. They sure do. Four minutes to Pittsburgh for the Minutemen. This is icy. We mentioned from 2019 in Buffalo, Mark Del Gaizo. Watch out. Watch out. As the puck moves around. That's Mitchell Chafee with the goal. And then there's Chow in overtime. And Mark Del Gaizo. Tee it high, let it fly, off the glove and into the net. And that goal allowed them to reach the championship game. Oh, what a different world it was for all of us then. But no you, tournament last year, and we're back this year. You knew that goal was coming. You even warned me. <laughs> Watch out, Colby, and then boom, goal. You were you were on that call, Butch. Well, we see Chow. He's looking to make a pass always. Not much of a shooter, but this year, it looks like they're going back. Got to the championship game, and they were completely outclassed by Minnesota Duluth. Scott Sandlin boys have been an absolute unit in the national title game two years in a row. And they'll try to make it three in a row. That game's coming up next. The Bulldogs in North Dakota out in Fargo. And that should be a it's tough to North Dakota. Dakota's got to play them. You know, that's a, that's a tough team. If they're in their home state and uh, they yeah. look a good, a, really a great year for Bradbury in North Dakota, winning the conference championship for the first time in the NCHC. They're absolutely loaded with future NHL players. And they, they usually are, it seems, doesn't it? That's going to be a good game tonight. North Dakota, I mean, they they impressed me. When I watched them play in that NCHC tournament, they did not look to me like they have any holes. But you got to play Minnesota Duluth just to get out of your bracket. I mean, that is going to be big boy hockey tonight. The winner of that game will play UMass in Pittsburgh. So UMass can go back and watch that game and start the scouting process because they know they're going to play North Dakota or Minnesota Duluth. Jones shot tip. Driscoll, nice save. You can really see that one. Ethan Samosa gets it deep. But really, congratulations to Tom Saratori and the Bemidji State Beavers. They pulled their goalie and they have the extra attacker on with three and a half to go. Looking for the miracle comeback. Extra attacker, number 16, Aaron Miller. UMass has an empty net. And guess what? Anthony Galdizo might get his second in two days. No! <laughs> You love that, right, Barry? You do. You, no quit, man. No quit. I'm not giving you a goal. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you're going. I'm not giving you a goal. Can Chow get the empty netter? He does. Oliver Chow seals the deal for the Minutemen. Chow had the breakaway yesterday from center in. And he, and he, uh, he, he didn't score, so he's getting rewarded here with an empty netter. Well, he's had a great game, setting yeah. up his line mates, looking to make the pass. The pass to Mark Del Gaizo in the semifinal game two years ago. It was him who made the play to win that overtime game. And for the Beavers, they know their season is over. Yeah, Cinderella's gone. You don't get a lot of smiles out of Coach Greg Carvel from UMass, but he smiled. I, I could see it under that mask. And this is an impressive team, guys. They really play thorough hockey. They're good at the blue lines. They're responsible with the puck. I've been really impressed, Barry, with everything that we've seen over six periods from UMass. Without a doubt, you're exactly right. As far as uh, Bemidji is concerned, Mike Sillinger and Mrs. Sillinger, probably not feeling that good right now, but boy, you can be proud of your sons. They played hard every game. Ooh, there's a headshot coming up against UMass. It wasn't that bad, but certainly going to get a penalty. We'll see if they look at it. We'll see if if it's anything out as Russ Armour shaking up a bit as uh, going by Ooh. Laganoff, who Ooh. just makes a little bit of contact. He'll be going to the penalty box and the look to see if it's anything more than that when we return to Bridgeport. 
Yes, so Greg Carville and the UMass Minutemen are going to go to Pittsburgh, but in the meantime, Philip Laganov has been given a five-minute major and an ejection for this kind of fly-by hit. He's going to make a little bit of head contact with his left shoulder. It wasn't like he was looking at the player and targeting, but his shoulder did hit the head of Armour, and he's gone. So the rest of the game, surprised the net is not empty, but I guess that's enough. He doesn't want to see any more empty net goals. Down 4 nothing. Five on four power play. Bemidji State tries to get on the board here. Late in Bridgeport. Back to the point fold. Wrist shot blocked. What a job by Mark Del Geiser throwing his body in front of that with victory already secured. That hurt him too. He's hobbling around out there, Butch. Lucas Sillinger, Brendan Harris. Mitten on the ice. Sillinger passing. Looking to get it back, doesn't. Bold. Harris takes the shot down low. Tic tac, but no toe. Bold. Sillinger. Harris. Shot. Tough save by Forsberg. So even though Laganov is gone from the game, he will be eligible to play in that semifinal game in Pittsburgh. That's great news. I am surprised Driscoll is still in the net for Bemidji. I mean, just to you know, try to get on the board. What's five nothing? What's four nothing? Try to get somebody a goal here and go but six on four. I don't know. I I've seen guys get three, four empty net goals. Well, maybe one more that you'd shut it off. But on the power play, you thought you know maybe give your team a chance to get one. You don't want to get shut out. Miller saved by Lindbergh on the hard wrist shot. Rosen, Smolik looking for his first college goal, number four at the point. Doesn't have one yet. Jones, what a play by Jones. Wins the battle and clears. 75 seconds left until UMass officially heads to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and their second consecutive frozen four. Smolin. Power play the rest of the game for Bemidji State, unless they commit a penalty. Good stick by Bollinger. You know, he's impressed me all game, this defenseman Bollinger. He's a freshman and plays a lot of big minutes. Second power play, kills penalties. Smart player. He gets his head up, uses middle head ice. Up here, and just up. another guy we're talking about on UMass that's really made an impact. The UMass bench is hooting and hollering. This was really a textbook performance yeah, by them. This is how they drew it up, Johnny. You're exactly right. A shout out. Hardly any shots, hardly any goal scoring chances. Pretty disciplined, no bad penalties. Big line was awesome. Greg Carbo yep. clapping on the bench right now. The whole bench is clapping. Best, this best players, you gotta have it. They've had good juice the whole game. This is what you play for, man. It's why you lift those weights. It's why you drink those protein shakes. They really did win the game in the first period when they gave up that late goal. They are going to Pittsburgh. The UMass Minutemen returning to the Frozen Four for the second consecutive Frozen Four. Two years ago in Buffalo, and this year, off to Pittsburgh. worked for the UMass coaches. They said, we wore them all year. We're going to keep it going. We won the Hockey East Tournament Championship for the first time. We'll see if the pullovers are on in Pittsburgh. I got a feeling they might have suits on, but maybe not, Barry. Superstitious, eh? Yep. Superstitious, eh? <laughs> There's Carson Gusevich, the star of the game. Philip Lindbergh, the shutout, but Carson Gusevich in that top line, Barry, three goals. He was great. He was the best player on the ice. The line was fantastic. That was a short-handed goal. Goals always kill you giving that up. Shot from the point, traffic in front. He's in there sticking his nose. Just a great power move. He's winning the battle in front of the net. He goal, three goals, three different ways. Fantastic game for him. Fantastic game for his line. The two teams saluting themselves at center ice. Colby, I know you were impressed by those defensemen we focused on. Yeah, they were great. They carry the play, and they are really the engine, Butchie, that is going to give the UMass Minutemen a chance to win a national championship. Yeah, from Mites to the NHL, when you have a defensive core like that, they are the fuel injectors. They help fuel Carson Gusevich and the UMass Minutemen to become the first team to punch their ticket to Pittsburgh. For Barry Narrows and Colby Cohen, we'll see you in Pittsburgh.
Pittsburgh in two weeks.